Yo, it looks like Goji Center has uploaded a video with the words Jurassic Park and the words bloodiest in the title. So I'm immediately interested, dude. That sounds fantastic. I hope it's insanely gnarly and we all walk away with minor PTSD. So yeah, check out Goji Center. Link down below. Leave a like, subscribe, and let's do it. <laughs> all right, let's make like a newborn baby and head out. It's a good one. It's a good one, Johnny. The Jurassic franchise does not fail in showcasing villainous characters. But today, we aren't going to talk about humans. We are going to talk about dinosaurs. The bad dinosaurs. What? In this episode, we will evaluate the five big bad theropods featured in the Jurassic franchise, taking into account several villainous attributes that will grant one of these killers the title of ultimate villain. I dispute this whole concept going into this. There's no such thing as an evil dinosaur. Hungry dinosaurs, perhaps, but I get it. It's a good theme. It's nice and can't be long and descriptive in titles. Descriptive? You need to summarize it, and the word villain is perfect. I'm not arguing. I love Goji Center, but they're, <laughs> they're they're good guys. To see more content featuring your favorite dinosaurs, bloodthirsty monsters, and more carnage, hit that red subscribe button, like this video, and hold on tight as we rank the atrocities of the big five Jurassic World villains. They lower the world's population. First That's helping pollution. The they're heroes. During this video, a fun, free-to-play mobile game that is available on all devices. Ooh collect a whopping 1,000 unique monsters with different combat abilities. That's and actually pretty cool. coming out every week. Like The Walking Dead? Well, you're I in do. luck because they've teamed up with Monster Legends to bring you six new powerful monsters inspired by the main character. Hey, God, did y'all turn Daryl into a furry? <laughs> what have you done to my boy? At least Negan looks awesome. He's like some kind of demon monster. But Daryl's got some issues. So to start collecting these new monsters, use the link in the description or use this QR code to get these limited time starter packs of 100 thousand gold, 20,000 food, three gems, and Mothman. Thanks to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to our episode. That was the beautiful. The dinosaurs that will make up this list will be the five big theropods that were portrayed as villains in some of the Jurassic films. While it is true that there were other species of dinosaur that displayed malevolent behavior towards the main characters, we are going to omit these smaller creatures simply because they don't fit the description of the big bad that we are presenting in this episode. To be counted on this list, the creatures had to be portrayed or advertised as the bad dinos in their corresponding films. I guess that's totally fair. I don't know why I ranted in the intro. It's not like a Goji Center did that. Like the franchise literally set these dinosaurs up as the villains. So yeah, I guess my beef is with them. We are also omitting the Rexes in this series due to their protagonistic role in all of their appearances and the fact that they were just acting like the predators they naturally are. Also, keep Thank in mind you. that the rankings that will be revealed at the end of the video will be based on several criteria that make them the worst villain, not based solely on combat ability. These attributes are design, relentlessness, shrewdness, cruelty, and their backstory. What is shrewdness? Let's begin with our first Shrewd? dinosaur, the Spinosaurus. This dinosaur appeared in Jurassic Park 3, giving us a ton of stuff to talk about. Let's begin with its design. Note that Cooper. this attribute <laughs> is important because it tells us how intimidating this villain looks and how well it functions as an animal. This Spinosaurus was obviously Obviously not the paleo accurate one that we are now acquainted with. Can I just say science nerds need to drop all this discovering crap? You guys are ruining dinosaurs. I know it's not accurate, but the Jurassic Park 3 one was so much cooler than this fish we have nowadays. What are you doing to a scientist? Let us enjoy stuff, all right? Get a job, hippie. In this Spino's case, this turned out to be a good thing because this posture allows it to be a lot more dangerous than its real life counterpart, especially ah. when it ah. comes to its height, being able to reach elevated objects and a crucial height advantage against other predators. Not to mention that this Spino design is amongst the most favorites in the Jurassic fan base. It's so gangster. It's relentlessness. This word basically means how persistent you are on attaining your objectives, or in a villain's case, how persistent you are on inflicting evil. Ew. This Spino? Very much so. Once nicked by this plane's propeller, this guy immediately went from being a predator doing predator things to a vengeful monster who constantly followed this group of humans around the island seeking revenge. This takes us to its intelligence. How did this Spino know to follow these particular people? Well, remember how this guy finally found the plane that nicked it earlier? Inside of this strange flying apparatus were these things things people dude i would like little 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 boy johnny always thought that like he just kind of bit onto cooper and like his, he just exploded like a water balloon and some of it got on the plane and the spider was just hungry and wanted more food that's kind of what i thought was going on i didn't know that the plane even hit it but i guess that makes sense because the plane did go down yep no it makes sense spino now understood that these organizations
organisms housed inside this craft were the intelligent beings responsible for this incident. This sort of cognition that allowed Spino to piece this together grants this creature a good rank in intelligence. This goes on as to being able to figure out a good strategy to defeat Rexes, determine the weakness of artificial barriers, etc. But how cruel was this thing? In this episode, we look at cruelty as how far out of your way will you go to inflict the highest level of pain and fear on a victim. The Spino is equipped with somewhat straighter teeth than a T-Rex, but built to be able to grip onto prey to allow its neck maneuvers to do its bidding. And these big claws on its hands? We've seen these claws in action on humans only twice with a horrendous end to its victims. But nothing that makes us believe that Spino took its time to inflict elongated pain it's or It's too big. I don't know if it, it could take its time. Them. We don't know much about the Spino's backstory other than it being illegally created in Isla Sorna and facing some mistreatment by humans. And they illegally created it? Did I even watch the a little little kid Johnny? Just even now as an adult, I didn't catch that. Which makes this dinosaur's backstory a real mystery. But one thing that we do know is that this creature is known to be a T-Rex killer. That's right, it's mentioned that the Spino would actively look out for T-Rex P and then use this scent to locate and kill any unsuspecting T-Rex. What a weirdo! A dinosaur that actively looks out to kill the icon of this franchise will most definitely place the Spino in a decent position in this ranking. But first, let's discuss a dinosaur that was literally engineered for chaos. Claire. Number two, the Indominus Rex. I'd like a Claire After video. This, we will discuss the most unique big theropod in this entire franchise. Unique in that it was literally designed by a whole unit of engineers and scientists to be a dinosaur that inflicts fear and terror on tourists. Except it went on to inflict this on a much larger demographic. The Indominus Rex's white color, raptor-like build, and the fact that it was just massive made it a much more interesting dinosaur. This animal had a build that was unlike any other super theropod in existence. Dude, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or not. The first Jurassic World movie was the best by far. The Indom was so awesome, and then, like, the Indoraptor just seemed like a smaller Indom, and I don't know, just like, and then the Giga didn't even kill anybody, and the Indominus Rex was peak Jurassic World. Consequently, the audience would get excited every time the Indominus would appear on camera. In terms of relentlessness, we need to pay attention to these dinosaurs' objectives, which was to escape, and then proceeded to just kill. Remember that this dinosaur lived inside this enclosure for its entire life, and it knew there was stuff out there. As a result, this animal spent its last day on Earth roaming an island with a ton of new things it had never seen before, running into many types of creatures and determining that the best way to engage with them was to kill them. This speaks to two additional villainous attributes, intelligence and cruelty. Poor creature was just trying to exist and didn't know what it was supposed to do or anything. It was just, it was all the fault of humans. Humans are the villains in all this. Both can go hand in hand because in order to find some sort of pleasure in killing, you need to have the cognitive functions that enable such brutality. Oh, that is true. This was the perfect example. It killed for sport and was seen killing humans in pretty brutal fashions, yanking legs off its live victims, snapping them in two, manhandling a few of them, crushing them, etc. That's like we dolphins and chimps are that cruel. How smart this thing was, but something we should really point out is the fact that it was the only dinosaur in this franchise that could effectively communicate with and command raptors. That's right, this girl hired her own crew of henchmen that did her bidding, and in the process turned them against their own. Dude, that's a good point at the bottom. The Indoraptor possibly could have done this, but was not able to command blue. I feel like that was just because it wasn't big enough, dude. It wasn't enough, enough of an alpha, whereas this is super alpha. So whatever the Indominus said to these raptors, it was enough to convince them to switch sides and hunt down the mercenaries, adding the word manipulative to the many words that describe this villain. Damn. This dinosaur didn't have a good upbringing. Upon birth, it said that this Indominus killed her sibling and was kept in constrained conditions her whole life. Not allowed to leave her enclosure, artificially fed, which was against her instincts to hunt, and always invigilated to the point that she eventually learned what this tracker was, which she then removed after she escaped. Before we place the Indominus Rex on our ranking table, let's first discuss another earlier hybrid creation. Number three, the Scorpius Rex. I don't know how I feel the about Scorpius this, Goober. Rex appeared in season two of Camp Cretaceous and was portrayed as a creature whose raw instincts forged it into the villainous creature it became. Design-wise, <laughs> it's a cool creature, but then again, according to Dr. Wu himself, it was a bit displeasing to the eye, but unique nonetheless. It, it just always looked to me like an Indoraptor ran into a wall and its face got scrunched in. Like it broke its jaw and nose bone severely, and that's just what we're left with. This animal is 
equipped with long limbs, a spiked tail with venomous quills courtesy of jeans from a scorpion fish, and an interesting shortened snout filled with aberrated rows of teeth. Again, like the previous hybrid, this dinosaur's unique design allows this to rank high in terms of visual villainous appearance, and some bonus points for being engineered to be capable of reproducing using parthenogenesis. But how relentless was this animal? What a nerd! This will have to be discussed with the matter of intelligence. While it is true that this creature showed problem-solving abilities, it also showed signs of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. <laughs> whatever it was doing, external factors would make it switch its attention and pursue other objectives. Things such as hearing other dinosaurs at a distance and detecting burning objects were just a few things that distracted the Scorpius Rex from its task at hand. These mental ailments hinder this creature at ranking high in these two categories. However, this does not mean that this animal was not cruel at all. Remember, in the event that this creature did reach its objective and finally gets to inflict the killing blow, this creature will use terrorizing ambushing methods to kill prey and mercilessly kill entire herds of herbivores. Did it enjoy the killing? Well, we do see that at times the Scorpius Rex would slowly approach these kids and seem to get a kick out of seeing these peeps get cornered. This dino could have swiftly ended them right here, for instance, but instead took its time. I don't, I don't quite qualify that as cruelty so much as like writers who refuse to like, cause I guess a kid show, the kids can't die horrible deaths, but come on dude, if you want me to really watch it. So yes, we can say that this thing enjoyed this act, which gives it a boost in the villainous cruelty attributes. But what about its story? It's said that this animal was the very first hybrid created. And as a result of the early concepting, this animal would not be as polished genetically as the later hybrids. These imperfections would be laid bare by this animal's unpredictable and hyper-aggressive nature, which was why it was put into cryogenic sleep before the events of 2015. Up next, we will evaluate a dinosaur that was actually a refined genetically engineered dinosaur and an extremely violent creature. The Indoraptor is so what is pretty. The table looking like? Because the Scorpius Rex didn't score as high in both relentlessness and intelligence due to its mental ailments, its overall average ranks it slightly lower than the powerful what? Spinosaurus. Upon Wait, bringing the no. Indominus Rex into what? the mix, however, <laughs> we see that this animal's high score okay. in all five categories places it above both the Scorpius and the Spinosaurus. In this is actually perfect. This is what I was hoping for when I was screaming, what, a second ago? It's because it wasn't in this exact order. In terms of villainous nature, don't confuse this with physical power. These are villainous characteristics, which also include physical attributes. But will the Indominus Rex keep its number one spot after we discuss the next two supervillains? Yes! Number four, the Indoraptor. This is a dinosaur probably famous for one thing, killing, or its acquired taste for it. But first, design. This creature was the next iteration of the Indominus line of hybrids, a more compact, fun-sized version of the Indominus Rex, but more deadly in the fact that this guy was a bioweapon commissioned to kill human beings. Its long, slender body with a quadrupedal posture Jesus, allowed it to weave its way through tough terrains, perfect senses including echolocation and razor-sharp weapons on its jaws and claws to spell doom on any unlucky victim. Oh, and bullet-resistant skin. Yeah, in terms of design, this guy reaches a near-perfect score. This animal would prove to get a bit obsessed with the concept of inflicting terror on its victims, the fact that this dinosaur kept chasing Maisie Lockwood around the house and obsessively stalking her says a lot about how messed up in the head this dinosaur really is. I mean, come on, look at this, man. This? This isn't hunting. This is child abuse. That is gnarly. to admit that this guy was extremely intelligent as well, so much that it was able to leverage deceit, and it seemed to enjoy it. In addition to that, this animal showed signs of advanced problem-solving similar to what its predecessor possessed, and even expressive when it comes to its emotions. The only problem, however, is that all this raw brutality was given pause by this apparatus. That's right, this guy was also engineered to pay attention to this laser that was pointed at a victim. This part always bugged me, because they're like, you could spend billions of dollars on this raptor that anyone you aim this laser at will get eaten. It's like, dude, I'm already aiming a gun at the person. Can I just pull the trigger? Like, it's, you come on, like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Once emitting an acoustic signal, this animal would then attack said target. A perfect example of how this animal's killer instincts were interrupted was in this scene. Before attacking Owen and Maisie, this Indoraptor had already determined that jumping here was not not safe. But after Claire pulled up and pointed this laser at Owen, then the Indoraptor forgot all about it, ultimately putting it in a position where it would later fall and die. This the goofy Indoraptor bastard. All figured out, but the laser came in and erased all of 
that. It is because of this that we will have to penalize the Indoraptor when it comes to overall rankings. Dude, Fallen Kingdom just had so many issues for so many reasons. The whole movie was just, I'm just gonna say it. The movie sucked, all right? And that's cool. Dinosaurs, which I love. Chris Pratt was awesome, but like the movie sucked. And hold that in for a while. You can't burn Brachiosauruses in lava and shoot blues and have Indoraptors die in goofy ways. This is a dinosaur movie, man. And gee, there was like a gas chamber scene with all the dinos. Like, what, what, what was that movie? Simply because this villain could be controlled. But the holding that one in. <laughs> backstory to the Indominus Rex living in captivity for most of its life. Except this guy seemed to go through a lot more mistreatment by his human captors. Ah. Which then could explain why this particular dinosaur took his time to kill humans. It was a dinosaur a snuff film. Revenge of some sort. We will now move on to the final and most robust dinosaur on this list. Number five, the Giganotosaurus. The poor Giga, dude. The Giga never even killed anybody, never killed anything. It ate a bug that was already dead. The Therizinosaurus is more of a villain in this movie. The Giga, according to the Jurassic lore, was one of the largest predators ever seen. The latest in this franchise's array of super predators, this animal measured over 50 feet in length, making poor it the Giga. second longest theropod in the Jurassic franchise. Its design was interesting in that it's actually completely different from the real life Giganotosaurus in both size and appearance. This Giga featured an <laughs> elegant set of osteoderms that decorated its back, beautiful striped body, and a majestic overall body build. It is the villainous attributes that we are going to have some trouble with. I do believe that's one of the first times I've heard Goji Center say majestic. I feel like this is a really special moment as it's a very special word. Like, damn, I might be focused on the wrong stuff. Unlike the other predators we have already covered, the Giga was actually portrayed as a dinosaur that would have behaved like any other predator. It wasn't haphazard hazardly killing everything in sight like the Scorpius. It wasn't enjoying the act of killing like the Indoraptor. It didn't kill for sport like the Indominus. Didn't do anything. It definitely didn't seek other T-Rexes to kill like the Spino. Though, to be fair, the ancient Giga was actually seen to kill a T-Rex in the prologue, though this was most likely a simple territorial dispute. A clear win for the Giga nonetheless. But it wasn't done out of spite. Upon meeting the crew, the Giga seemed to act like a normal predator. It sees food? Well, it's gonna go out to eat it. Except the movie did this giga dirty. If this exact situation took place in the Lost World, for example, at least half of these people would have been dead. Thank well, you. you could argue that the giga may have been just playing with his food, there are parts that would leave you with your head scratching. Why isn't this giga simply biting down on an easy meal? What the heck is he waiting for? Or the fact that almost 99% of predators would have easily detected or at least smelled humans standing 10 feet away. It's because they had the whole cast there. You're supposed to have a couple of random jabroni employees running around too, and those are the ones that get eaten, you know what I'm saying? It's, you can't just have the whole, it's, I can't see, the cast was so big, there was like eight of them, like 15 of them, oh, it was probably like four, getting, getting pissed off right now. It's stuff like this that puts its Silliness. intelligence to question. We'd like to imagine that the Giganotosaurus in this movie was not always this stupid. Given the <laughs> evidence of intelligence upon its final <laughs> confrontation with the T-Rex, it's this type of scene where you need to submit yourself as a villain, a bad guy, someone or something that will go out of the way to kill anyone, whether they're the good or bad guy. I thought Ian Malcolm was gonna die right here. 1,000%. I was like, no, Eddie would kill anyone but him, and then he just still does it, and I was like, well, hang on, still kill somebody. And the Giganotosaurus simply failed to do that here. This magnificent creature was just another predator who showed up at the wrong place at the wrong times, and was ultimately killed doing territorial predator things. We don't have much of a backstory for this particular Giganotosaurus, but what we do know is that this film had implied some pre- historic beef or rivalry between the Rex and the Giga, explaining that a long time ago, a Giganotosaurus miraculously spawned in the late Cretaceous and murked this T-Rex. So, how do all these dinosaurs fare in our villainous rankings? Well, the because Giga didn't do anything. did not rack up enough points in the relentlessness, shrewdness, and cruelty categories, the Giganotosaurus will place fifth in our overall villainous rankings. Yeah, this right. dinosaur yeah. had the potential to be a lot more, and it was equipped with everything it needed to cause calamity and destruction to this entire biome. But it didn't. A missed opportunity. Taking the fourth spot, we have a dinosaur whose mental ailments prevented it from fulfilling the atrocious acts it should have committed. A dinosaur that gets distracted too much to follow through its villainous plans. He's just an idiot. Rex. It's because he is the earliest hybrid, so he's literally, I, I wouldn't even call it ADHD, I'd call it literally missing several chromosomes since it looks like a giant deformed creature. It's clearly like some Frankenstein monster that's not all together in the head. To its merit, however, this dinosaur's hyper-aggressive personality and brutal killstreaks allowed it to place higher than 
the Giganotosaurus. Had this dinosaur been in another show other than kid-friendly Camp Cretaceous, this dinosaur could have ranked higher on this list. Taking the third spot in the table is a dinosaur whose relentlessness to chase a small group of humans throughout an island made this a thing of nightmares. Its vengeful nature, its epic design, and T-Rex killing trait ranks it above the Scorpius and the Giganotosaurus, the Spinosaurus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think Spino should have been second. It has a way higher kill count than the doof. Hey, I'm just gonna let which it happen. leaves us with these two. <laughs> which of these will take the number one spot? Both the Indominus and Indoraptor showed exceptional levels of intelligence, a sleek and scary look, rich backstories, and bloodthirsty personalities. I think it comes down to this. I feel like the Spino, the Jurassic Park 3 Spino, would destroy the Indoraptor, right? I don't know, dude. But because these are bioengineered, there is a trait that holds one of these dinosaurs back, and that is the Indoraptor. As explained earlier, the fact that this dinosaur is engineered to be able to be controlled by humans puts pause at whatever malevolent deed this dinosaur was about to commit. The Spino wouldn't have backed down right here. He had eaten everybody. Something that cannot be said for our number one, the Indominus Rex. Our uncontested winner successfully fills these categories, giving us a dinosaur that will be forever remembered as one of the most bloodthirsty killers of this entire franchise, and the one to shut down an entire park. If you want that to is see true. a more in-depth analysis on this topic, go check us out on the Beast Hub Podcast YouTube channel, a new channel featuring Joe from Goji Center, Jacob from from Dangerville and special guests such hey. as James the Gaming Beaver discussing topics on dinosaurs, kaiju, and other crazy beasts. He's the Dino Pro. Thanks to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to click on the links below to get the incredible The Walking Dead hey monsters and free starter pack. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hey God, let's pull up this list for a second. It's a good list. I'm with it. I know the, the Jurassic Park 3 Spino is like universally hated. I might be alone on this. So this is just my opinion. I'm only speaking mine. But even if the Indoraptor is a higher score than the Spino, I understand it. But like 74 to 82, that's just bananas. Dude, that is, that is a huge my humongous difference in the Indoraptor only being, I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess the Indoraptor, I'm extremely biased against Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom though. I'm just like that. But yes, either way, check out Goji Center down below for more awesome Godzilla dinosaur stuff. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>